Amber Chet responds to the meeting with NASA and a whole bunch more. It's time for another UFO news roundup. So get in here. This is Jack with Cosmic Road. I talk about UFOs and the paranormal. Please hit like, please subscribe, please share on social media, and let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Okay, let's just get right to it. Uh, I made a piece about how Tim Burchett and others in the House Oversight Committee were going to meet with NASA, seemingly in preparation for the next UFO hearing. And Tim Burchett had been talking about maybe getting the director of NASA's UFO program to actually be a witness at the next UFO hearing, something that I don't support at all. I think that would be a waste of time, just like getting another Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick, the lovely Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick. Uh, but let's listen to what Tim has to say about the results of that meeting uh, behind closed doors with NASA. Hey everybody, Tim Burchett just left um, Oversight Committee. Where's my man Noah? Say hey Noah. Hey everybody. Um, we were being briefed by NASA on their 56 page. Oh ma'am, great seeing you. Thanks for what you do for us. Um, briefed on their um, um, report on UFO, UAP, whatever. It's 56 pages, it doesn't say a whole lot. To me, it was just driving them towards um, us getting funding. But one thing came out, my colleague Gary Palmer asked, um, about classified stuff at NASA and they said we don't have anything classified and like what you don't have anything classified I mean satellite imagery of something and they uh, is very elusive and so what I think they've done is they sent these two folks in here like the Pentagon did and have very little knowledge of the issue and so they can say they can hold up their hand before Congress and swear that they know nothing about the issue and it doesn't exist and and then they went through there was no proof and I said what about you know, these Navy pilots that swear that they're hey brother chasing these things <clears throat> we had testimony that said they did and we have video of it audio of them talking and they said I'll see you over there Noah hey how, you doing? how are you hang on one second hang on one second um, so anyway um, didn't get a lot from that, and I'm a little disappointed, so we're probably gonna have to get some more people from the Pentagon in there to tell us what exactly is going on, because I'm not for giving anybody more money. I just want the truth. Just give me the facts. Thank y'all. And I know I cut myself shaving. I don't want to hear about it. See you, bye. Thank y'all for sitting here. Be careful with that razor, Tim. But there you go. Tim is now talking about getting people from the Pentagon in uh, to, to, to hear from them instead of more people from NASA. I don't know which would be a better use of his time. I guess the people from the Pentagon, at least there's a few allies of disclosure there. I mean, uh, the inspector general did release David Grush to make some statements, even if he won't allow Tim Burchett to get in a skiff with him. Um, and there do seem to be other allies as well. The previous inspector general actually became a staunch ally of David Grush, even to the point of becoming his own attorney. But in any case, it turns out that the NASA meeting was a big bust and Tim Burchett is disappointed in it and uh, basically a big nothing burger. I mean, what else can you expect? It's NASA. They've been hiding this stuff forever. I mean, I don't know how deep NASA is, is involved in what the control group is doing, but they have definitely been covering this stuff up. And I mean, the, the history of NASA is pretty, pretty wonky. I mean, the whole Jack Parsons, you know, thing and the uh, Operation Paperclip, uh, you know, it's, 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 an, it's an, as a, it has a nutty origin story. So if it had continued to be nutty during its, uh, operations, it would not surprise me. If you don't know the Jack Parsons story, you should check it out. It's mixed up with L. Ron Hubbard and Aleister Crowley. Uh, and it's, 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 it's a juicy story. It's a juicy story. Uh, and of course, there is the Operation Paperclip connection, which many of you will be familiar with, where we have World War, World War II Germans. Yeah, those guys uh, that I don't know if I'm allowed to say that word on YouTube anymore. Yeah, censorship is real. Um, but uh, yeah, the, those, you know, Jack Parsons was a founder of NASA. The Operation Paperclip guys, they were a big part of it. So you've got the Yahtzees and a disciple of Aleister Crowley. Uh, that uh, built NASA, basically. And so, 
you know, it would not surprise me at all if they were more heavily involved in the control group than it might otherwise appear. Because like I have said before, on all of the abduction experiences that I've studied, when they see military and government people assisting the beings in these abductions, they have never, uh, to my knowledge, uh, from my research, seen a NASA employee present. And the ships that these people are flying around in don't use propulsion technology, so I don't know how much use NASA technology would, would have for them. But I feel like I'm getting off the subject here. Uh, the meeting with NASA was a bust, so I, I don't expect the director of NASA's UFO program to testify at the next UFO hearing, and that is a good thing to my mind. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Another news, uh, an article, a recent article on Fox News, accusations fly over alleged secret UFO program cover-up. The Inspector General of the Intelligence Community said it has not conducted any audit, inspection, evaluation, or review of UFO allegations raised by David Grush. A lawmaker has screamed cover-up after the intelligence community said it hasn't looked into claims of secret programs that retrieve crashed UFOs and reverse engineer the technology. And it goes on to talk about Tim Burchett's fears and concerns regarding the Inspector General and the cover-up. I'm not going to read the article, but I'll link to it below and you can read it at your leisure. But I bring it up to show that there are mainstream news outlets that are still continuing to positively cover uh, the UFO phenomenon and uh, the investigation into it. Uh, and all the work that people like Tim and Ryan Graves and others are, are continuing to do. Even in the wake of the Mexican UFO uh, hearing, which may have been a disaster in terms of public uh, relations, whatever those bodies turn out to be, but I was very worried uh, immediately on the heels of that, that that would sour reporting on this issue. And it's still, it's still too early to see how things shake out there, but at least there are still some people positively disposed toward the, getting to the truth behind the phenomenon and reporting on it uh, in a in a positive way. Meanwhile, in Argentina, 150 sheep were found dead. The attack happened between the night of Sunday and the first hours of Monday. The animals were spread through a vast area, and owners believe wild dogs were responsible. Local police opened an investigation. Well, I hope so. Uh, you know, the, the video is a little disturbing Batteries. because there's one of these poor animals is still alive. Uh, they, they do look like they've been attacked if you watch the blown up video and it's a little grisly so I'm not going to blow it up so you can see all the grisly carnage. Uh, but it does look like the animals were attacked. I don't think this is a UFO related. On the other hand, the animals don't appear to have been eaten. And would wild dogs really attack a, and kill 150 sheep? Uh, to me that seems unlikely, but I am not a wild dog expert. So if you guys have any more knowledge of this sort of thing, uh, let me know in the comments below. But I'm definitely intrigued by this incident where 150 feet sheep were killed all at the same time and uh, the meat was not eaten, although they do show signs of injury. Uh, you know, uh, unlike with the uh, cattle mutilations where, uh, you know, it doesn't look like they were attacked in, in, in the way that a predator would attack them. The sheep's blood does not appear to be drained, etc. It does not seem to be a cattle mutilation type event, but still very weird. And in an area uh, where they are having some uh, heavy uh, activity involving UFOs. Meanwhile, good news from Chris Mellon. When I set out on this journey, the goal was to get our government to take the UAP issue seriously and investigate appropriately. Now, in just five years, we have Congress, DOD, and NASA fully engaged. This is a huge achievement and all, uh, all we could reasonably ask for. When the Schumer bill passes, will be in the end zone. I like his optimism. We're going to be in the end zone when this bill passes. But Jeremy Corbell has a good point. He says, is it in the bag that the UAP legislation will 100% pass? Or do you think people should call members of HPCSCI right away while they are conferencing the legislation? Are you sure or sh should we make calls? As of the time of this video, I haven't seen a reply from Chris, but if you're in the mood to call, 
I would definitely recommend calling because we need that Schumer in rounds amendment passed. They're actually trying to pry open the control group and get access to the juicy inside. I mean, theoretically, they could actually get their hands on a UFO, even alien bodies. Potentially, even live aliens. Who knows? Jeremy also comments on the alien body situation. He says, UFOs are real and some appear to be operated by or contain biological pilots, and it's well documented and currently reported that our government likely has acquired some of those bad boys and put them on ice. However, the purported alien mummies of Peru, have you read the DNA results as a minimum? Seeing as how the science tells a story vastly different from the reporting of the science, this contra, uh, uh, contradiction offers a glimpse into one of the reasons I suspect you should be suspicious, to say the least. Many years ago, a company attempted to rope me into investigating, really promoting this whole thing for TV. You can imagine what I told them at the time. I would love to be wrong about this. Uh, this would be ex exceptionally mind-blowing. And he links to the uh, DNA uh, test. And here it is. And I've read it, and it, it basically, it's, um, uh, this is from one specimen, and it is saying they've done samples of the skull tissue and uh, found it to be human. So that is really interesting. However, there's like three other specimens uh, that he, uh, the results of which he did not link to. And uh, I don't know the, the results of those. Now, I really don't see how the, that fellow right there could be a uh, human. Could it be an alien hybrid of some sort? Absolutely. Could it be a fake or a doll or some sort of ritualistic totem uh, made by the people a thousand years ago for some ritualistic purpose? Absolutely. However, the uh, doctors that have looked at it and done the, the scans on it say that it is one whole being, not a cobbled together doll or the like. So what we really need is somebody like Avi Loeb, who apparently has expressed interest in this, uh, to actually study this. Uh, ideally, multiple people in multiple, uh, you know, credible universities in the like. My mind is still very open on the alien body thing, uh, but I was, you know, I found the evidence from the doctor's uh, a CT scan very compelling. But DNA is also very compelling. And if the DNA says one of these specimens was human, I, I really don't understand how that could be unless it's an alien human hybrid, but then it wouldn't show up, I wouldn't think, as 100% human, unless it was perhaps an altered, a genetically engineered human of some sort. Or maybe there was just some human DNA in the skull uh, left there by somebody that, you know, handled this thing or something. I don't know, guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Oh, and here's a cool quote from Eric Davis. Uh, there have been crashes. The superpowers on Earth have had their share of crashes, UFO crashes, and they have recovered vehicles from the crashes. That's why Jacques Vallée and I agree that even though these things behave like a conscious, conscious spiritual psychic energy, they do have an advanced technology. They have hardware and there's a craft and there's occupants or UFO knots, as Valet calls them. They're UFO knots flying them. Uh, but they behave like a conscious, spiritual, psychic energy. That is crazy. But, I mean, that's, according to my own research, that dovetails very well. Uh, that there is a metaphysical, mystical, spiritual element to all of this, or at least to a lot of it. But there is also very much a nuts and bolts element to it as well. And I would love to understand how those two things go together. If you've cracked the code, let me know in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up. I sure would appreciate it. Smash the subscribe button and the bell to be notified of future videos. You don't want to miss a thing. Join me on social media. There's Facebook and Twitter links below. I would love to see you guys there. If you wanted to share this video on social media, that would be super groovy. If you wanted to support Cosmic Road in a bigger way, please consider becoming a channel member. Channel members are rock stars, and I really appreciate you guys' support. Thank you. Meanwhile, there's plenty of other videos to check out on the channel, and I'll see you next time. This is Jack with Cosmic Road, signing out.